So today we're going to look at these e-paper displays. What are their massive advantages and what are their massive disadvantages? Let's get cracking. Is that it? <sighs> so here we have these two e-paper displays or e-ink. E-ink is a trademark, it's like the official name. E-paper e is the more generic name. Now these screens may look identical, but one is black and white and one is color. Now when I say color, it's not like 4,096 colors or quarter of a million colors or RGB color even. It is just black, white and red, but it can be quite effective. Which is which? Very hard to tell. This is a black and white one, this is the colour one. In fact, even if you turn them over, maybe turn them the right way so we can see the writing. Even if you turn them over, you can see that the circuit board is identical as well. So there's no really easy way of determining which is a black and white one and which is a colour one. And that's quite important when we come to programming it because if you select the wrong library, you'll get nothing out of your screen. So to save my sanity, I'm going to actually write a little C on the header on that one for colour and I'll leave that at that. So I know if I've got a C on, this is the colour one and without the C, it's the black and white one, which is this one. So you can even see, even the connectors and the connections are all in identical and in the same place. So let's see what we need to actually connect these up. And we're going to, today we're going to actually connect them up to an ESP32. So grab yourself a cup of coffee and we'll get on with that. So if I bring my current development board in, I'm working with, with these e-paper uh, paper displays, you can see it looks a little bit of a rat's nest. It's not as bad as it is as it appears. You get supplied with these screens, this little connector, and they terminate, at least the ones I've bought, terminate in female DuPont connectors which is not ideal for what we want. We'd want to just have a male DuPont connector there and just pop it in. I could replace that connector, I just haven't been bothered to. So I've just got a male to male DuPont connector and I'll just put it in the end. So it looks overly messy. But let's get the actual connections on screen. You see it actually is very straightforward. You can see I've just literally connected all the connections along a single row here. It really is a doddle. You can connect these devices up to virtually any microcontroller. But for simplicity, I'm going to concentrate on the ESP32 for this episode and do others in other episodes. So the busy goes to pin 4. RST or reset, pin 16. The DC, pin 17. The CS, pin 5. The clock, pin 18. The DIN, which is basically the MOSI, MOSI, however you want to pronounce it, SPI connection on the SP32 is 23, that's the default connection, 23. VCC to 3.3 volts and ground to ground. So with that done, let's connect up the black and white screen first. And one thing I'd recommend you doing when you're just sort of like prototyping, if you're going to be taking these connections in and out a lot, I'd suggest just putting them in a little bit, obviously make sure that it is getting the connection, it's working, because the devil's on to pull out. They really are very snug and very tight. So let's plug the, put this onto our Arduino, see what libraries we need, and upload a demo. So we'll go to Sketch, Include Library, Manage Library, and type in ePaper. And the one I'm recommended, you'll, you'll see a few on here, but the one I'm recommending is the one you can see that I've got installed here. I have tried more than one. This is the one that I was most happy with. So I'll scroll this to the top so you can see which one it is I'm doing. It's the GX EPD2 by Jean-Marc Zing. Hopefully pronounced approximately correctly. And obviously install the latest one, which I have 1.2 installed, which will be, I am guessing, yep, the latest one that's slightly older. And one of the reasons I like this, I mean, apart from the fact that it worked better than the others in some other ways, is that it works with the Adafruit yeah. graphics library. And I'm quite familiar with that. I've used it over a lot of the displays I've used. So install that. And if you've never used the Adafruit graphics library, then you will need to install that as well. So you need to install, type in 
Adafruit GFX. And is this one here. Install that and you should be good to go. Now normally I'd show you a demo and I am going to show you a demo. I'm going to put the full demo on the ePaper display. So if you go to examples, I'll explain why I'm cautious about it in a minute. If you go down to examples, where will it be? Come on. There it is. GX EPD2. And just select that is fine. The, the, the its top example is fine. Put that in. It's enormous and it has a lot of useful information in here for connecting to different processes, including what I'm doing today. There's the instructions for the SP32 that I've already mentioned to you. And it has it for Arduino, ESP8266, uh, probably the TNC, all sorts of processes and, and information is in there. The blue pills in there as well. However, seeing what's going on, you can see there's a lot of commented out lines here as well. You have to comment in the correct line for your processor and for the display, which is why I'm going to make this series specific to a processor. So today I'm doing the ESP32 and it'll simplify the demo that I'm going to show you. So I will run this one, but I will then show you a, a demo that is very simplistic, with stri stripped down to the bare bone. So it's a lot easier to understand what's going on for the ESP32. If you'd like to go a bit more off piece before my other videos, then feel free to have a look through here and work out what you need to do. As you can see, there's an awful lot of things you have to look at. If you read through it, it's not too bad. As again, I'll give you a nice simple demo. So for example, I'm going to choose the ESP32. So I need to go into it where it says, if defined ESP32. And you can see I've already been doing this. I have chosen this one, which was right at the top. Why have I chosen this one out of all of these? Well, firstly, it's the BW stands for black and white. And that's what the display is I'm going to start working with for first. The 154 stands for that 1.54 inch screen, which is what this display is labeled as. And that's it. That's why I went for that. For the color one, I would comment out that line and I would scroll down here where it says three color e-papers. And then I would choose the 1.54 C, standing for color. And you can see you've got a three C meaning three color there. That's the one I would choose for my color display. So let's just comment that out for now. And again, if you're using a different processor, you need to go and find that if defined for your processor and alter that particular line. And we'll put that back in and we'll upload that to the ESP32. Let's have a look what this demo is going to do then. Powering up, clearing the screen, it's upside down. We'll get the camera to focus in. And you can see it's a very, very clear, almost paper like, which is, you know, the intention. Let's see if I can get it in even closer. Got a bit of a shadow of the camera on there. Let's put it there and just get it to focus. There we go. The clarity, as you've known if you've used any sort of e-reader, is fantastic. And then obviously it's, it's, it's demoing upside, you know, being able to rotate and display on any part of the screen, any sort of like rotation. So it's going through the first few demos. It goes through some more stuff as well in a bit. But anyway, so that's that. Very easy to do. So the demo is quite complex. So let's have a look at the bare minimum you would need to get this to done. Oh, I should talk about actually one of the big main advantages of this is if we take the power off. As you can see, it requires no power to hold its actual display. So when they say these things are low power, they seriously mean it as in zero power to hold a display. Obviously, to, when you're actually changing the display, it does take some current, not a lot, but some current. And you can see that was in mid scroll, it's just going off the screen. So let's have a look at the simple demo that you could use. It's a bit more clearer than that one. So here we are with our much simplified example. You can see it's actually barely a sort of screening length. 
so what have we got? Um, leave these top line, leave this top line in. We're using an ESP32. Don't worry about what it whatever, don't worry about what it does. It uses 1.2k of your RAM more if you include it for the advantage it gives. But we're using an ESP32 and yeah, it's got loads of RAM. 1.2k, not a problem. And then we're including the header. Because this example I'm going to show you first is for the black and white screen, we're including the black and white header. If I'd have been using the color screen, I would have included that one as well. But I'm not. And then I'm using one font type in this example, which is that one, which I'm using just down there when I set the font. If you want to use multiple fonts or a different font, you can see I've got three examples in here of fonts. So if I wanted to use two fonts, the 24 and the 18, I'd uncomment that one, and then I'd be able to use it in my code. There are other fonts available, which uh, you'll have to have a route through the source files to find them, which ones you can use. You'll find them in the fonts folder, as you can see there, and then you'll see all the ones that are available that you can use. And then we need the actual line that's going to allow us to work with the black and white screen, and that is this line. The black and white the bw line for the 1.54 inch screen if it again if it had been using the color i would have uncommented that line and i would have commented that one out but that's not what we're doing for this particular demo we're doing that shortly and then we initialize the display just there just always need that in then we call the routine it's called hello world because originally that is exactly what it did it wrote hello world on the screen and then i just changed the text a little bit for the actual video i just didn't change the name of the uh, function there you go, that's what we stick away, Hello World, even though it doesn't actually do that anymore. So come down to the Hello World routine, you can see I don't do anything in my loop, sorry, that's just going to go round and round and round once we've gone through the setup and call that route, that function there. But in the Hello World routine, we're setting the, the orientation of the any graphics or text we put on, two, three, and you've just got to experiment with that a little bit. Obviously on a square screen, there is four orientations it could be. You've got zero, one, two, and three. I set it to three because I know the way my, way my screen is on my breadboard with the wires, that will end up being the right way up without me having to hold it and twist it for my particular demo. Setting the font, no worries. And the colour of the text, well, it's black and white, you want a choice of black. If you happen to be working with the colour screen and then you went back to the black screen, you accidentally read, left that as red, then nothing's going to happen. Even though you might think, well, there's only two colours, I've said red, surely it'll just display a default of black. It doesn't, you just won't get anything on screen. So make sure you're using the right colour for the screen that you're working with. And then these lines are kind of just like an initialization. You don't have to worry about them too much, you just include them. You're going to you're telling it you're going to use the full window, the full display. And we're going to display the first page. And then, this is the code that we're going to actually use to write something to the screen. And for those that have been used to writing to any type of screen, even if it's from 40 years ago, working on a ZX81, that's for some of the older viewers here, I wouldn't <coughs> know exactly what that computer was. But whatever display you use, whether it's a little LCD or a little OLED, whatever is used, you would just write to it, whatever you're doing, and that's it. Just write it once, job done. Not quite that simple with an e-paper display. It wants to be written to as many times as it tells you to do it until it's happy and it can display. So that's what this while loop is doing. It's going to go round and round and round until the display is basically going to return and we're ready to do another page if you want to, basically. When the next page is false, then we'll come out of this loop. So while the next page is returning true, we are still kind of displaying things. It still wants us to, to write to the screen. And you've got to write over and over again. So if you wanted to do this on a normal screen, you could have actually missed out that set curse command. So we've filled the screen to a background of white. And then we've also set it text color to black. And yeah, you'd print that and everything be fine. But obviously because we're going around in a loop for how many times that screen wants us to go around in that loop, until it's happy, we're going to keep on printing this, then this, then this. And if we're not setting a cursor so it's exactly in the same position, then the next time round, it'll be on the next line under e-paper, and it'll just be a right mess. You have got to get into the habit of making sure you write your code 
so that the graphics and the text, wherever it is, will appear exactly as you want it to do in that position. So they can be called again and again and again and always write to that same position. Not usually a problem with drawing triangles or circles or lines. Generally, we'll do it like that. But on text, sometimes you might get into the habit of doing these sort of like print line commands. You need to get into the good habit with e-paper displays of definitely setting the cursor where you want that text to start. And then you're fine. So that will display it all. So without any further ado and any more waffle on that demo, let's get that onto the board and see how it looks. Okay, so we're uploading to the screen. This is the old demo still running. Okay, so extronical on e-paper. So extronical on e-paper. And it looks very good, doesn't it? So as you notice in that demo I just showed that we're still running, we had a small clock updating, look pretty cool. Like you could update this screen pretty fast, you can't. Watch when I plug this in, when we do a full screen sort of display from the start. You get a sort of flashing, takes about two seconds and then you display something. So if you're doing like a full uh, display, full screen, you've got about a two second delay before it happens. Even when you're doing a partial update of the screen, because this screen supports partial updating. So you can update just a small part of the screen. That means you can update things right, all that flashing and stuff. And that looks really good. However, on this color screen, you can't, it doesn't support partial updating. So on this, every time you're writing to the screen, you're getting them sort of like flashes and a few seconds delay before you can update it. So that's a massive disadvantage. Don't think you're gonna be writing any games to run on these that have any reasonably fast moving graphics or any sort of fast moving anything really. These are okay for text that's changing every now and again, maybe a temperature or a clock, something like that is fine. These, the colour ones, no. You want something where it's just going to be static on the display like temperature for several minutes perhaps at a time and you just update every now and again. So that's a massive disadvantage. The fact that the update of the display is very slow but of course the massive advantage is you can unplug this and that will stay on there forever. Let's just do that. Take the power off. No power to the system and it's still there. So you can put your ESP32 or any of the micro processors you're using and you can actually put them into a very, very low power sleep mode and the display will still be on so you can wake up every half an hour, take a temperature reading and display it. Now let's look at the colour one. So let's look at some of the changes we'll need to use the colour part of the display. Well the first one, which I've mentioned before, we need to select the correct constructor. So. We'll, we'll comment out that and we're highlighting this one, which is the 154C, 1.54 inch screen, C for colour, 3C, 3 colour. That's all we need to do there. That one's decommented out, that's fine. And then that's about it. It would uh, display, create the display in black if we left it like that, but obviously we want to see a bit of colour. So we'll select red. And that's it. So now we should get Astronical on ePaper in red let's upload that one so you can see i've plugged in my red display there's the actual one we've just done on black so we should see the same writing appear but on red we're getting near to upload and it's connecting and it's going to start uploading we'll see the screen sort of flicker and flash like they do and it's still uploading resetting there we go flicking and flashing and we'll get the text sort of slowly appear in glorious techno colour. Well, not quite, in glorious red anyway. I'll bring them a little bit closer. And yeah, I think the camera's still maintaining a reasonable focus. There we go. So, that kind of wraps it in. So to summarise, big advantages. Don't need to have power on to display. As you can see, that's still there is display on. Extremely low power. Well, low power when they're being updated as well. But big drawback, they don't update that quickly. This one, the black and white ones, tend to be capable of partial screen refresh, so you can just update a small amount of it, so moving a ticking clock is possible. On these ones, they don't support partial update, at least not this one that I've come across. I'm not sure whether any of the colours support partial update, some may do, but for this one, you then need to sort of update the entire screen, which gets a little bit clunky, but if you 
You've got to remember it's for a particular application. You're using this for a very low power application. I'm going to go into graphics and stuff in a later episode. So that's it for now. Thank you very much for, wa for watching. If you liked it enough, click the old thumbs up. If you really liked it and you're not a sub, please subscribe. Big thank you to all my patrons that support me on Patreon. That's really appreciated. You'll find some links down below, affiliate links for these two screens uh, where you can actually buy them at no extra cost to you. But I get a little bit of a kickback just to help support the channel. It's a great way of supporting me. But that's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. Catch you next time.